It's good to see all of you, those who are here and those who are at home. Um, this is a very special day for all of us. So I want to read a very special and very well-known psalm, which is Psalm 100. And this psalm tells us what we should do and why we should do it. And these are imperatives. Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. We're supposed to shout. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. And so we are here to worship the Lord because he is good, because of all the good gifts that he's given us. And our mothers is one of those special gifts that he's given us. Let us pray. Father, we are so privileged to be in your presence to worship you. Thank you for this psalm that reminds us of what we are to do and why. We are reminded that you are the one who created us and we owe you everything. And so today we are grateful to you for the special gifts you have given us in our mothers. And thank you, Lord, for uh, the privilege of uh, celebrating this day and also to do it in your presence and worship. So we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, Padre Luis. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. We're glad to be worshiping with you. We're going to start off singing as the psalm kind of talked about. We are here to, to sing and worship and praise, and we have uh, infinite, abundant reasons. And here we're going to sing 10,000 reasons to bless the Lord from our souls this Sunday morning. Let's stand as we sing, Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. To sing your song again Whatever may pass And whatever lies before me In all circumstances Let me be singing when the evening comes Bless the Lord, O oh my soul O oh my soul Worship His holy name Holy name, sing 
Good morning. Today is a special day. It's Mother's Day, and we have a special uh, video clip to show on behalf of the Armenian Evangelical Women's Fellowship of the West Coast uh, that Alina Balabanyan, uh, who is the chairperson of that uh, committee, has prepared. So let's watch that, and then we'll go to prayer accordingly. While we're trying, let me remind you of what I said in my email. Our internet is, is cut off. Uh, something happened uh, on Monday. Uh, the people were working on the roof to repair it, and uh, they, I guess something happened anyways. The, uh, the, the uh, cable was cut, and so therefore we've had no internet all week, and so we're trying different ways of uh, showing things. So will that work? or? Let me also share something else. Um, on the back table in the narthex, you will see those uh, sheets of paper that look like a calendar. This is a May calendar, and it is the um, uh, prayer request to pray for the women in Armenia. As you well know, uh, Armenia has gone through some very difficult times since the war, during the war, and since then. And so Alina has prepared something special for our women of the West Coast or both West and East Coast churches, all the women, to pray for uh, the women in Armenia. And there's something to pray for every day. And so if you would pick one up on your way out and uh, follow that, that would help us to uh, pray for them and how to pray for them uh, for each day. No, it's not going to work. All right. So the, the video was basically uh, Alina's exhortation for us to be mindful of the women in Armenia. And so why don't we bow our heads and pray for them as well as for our mothers. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are our God and you are our Father. You not only play the role of a father, but also of, of a mother. And uh, the Apostle Paul reminds us of how he... Uh, became a mother to the church in Thessalonica um, in caring for them and reminds us of how you care for us as a hen cares for the little chicks. And so, Father, we uh, want to come to you today uh, because, you're, because of your warm embrace, because of your grace towards us, and because you never turn us away. No matter where we've been and what we've done, Lord, you're always ready to embrace us, to accept us, accept us just the way we are. And so as we praise your name today, as we sing your praises, we are reminded of not only of your holiness and your perfection, but we're also reminded of our imperfection and our sinfulness. And so, Lord, we uh, come before you to confess our sins and to receive your grace of forgiveness for us to be able to move on. So today, we thank you for our mothers. Thank you for all those who have been faithful to you over the years to love you, to be an example to us, to teach us your word. And uh, thank you, Lord, for their sacrifice. Uh, thank you for uh, the way they've taught us uh, and they've even disciplined us. And so we want to uh, praise you for them and we, we want to affirm them. And today, Lord, we are mindful of um, mothers in Armenia, and uh, there are so many who have lost sons, who have lost husbands, and they're raising uh, their children by themselves. Uh, we pray for grandmothers who are grieving, and we pray that you would comfort them through your Holy Spirit. And I pray that they would look to you at a time like this rather than harden their hearts. And that as they look to you, Lord, that they would receive your grace uh, for them to be able to go on. And I pray for all the pastors and the spiritual leaders, the Christian leaders there who are ministering even today, Lord, that uh, you would give them uh, the message of comfort, the message of love and grace to be able to share with the people. We are also mindful of those who would like to be mothers but are not for one reason or another. And uh, so I pray, Lord, that you would uh, minister to them and remind them of your love regardless. And I pray that uh, you would remind them that you have a perfect plan for them, uh, a plan
plan for good and not for evil to give them a future and hope. And so uh, we, we bring them before you, Lord, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Let us continue our worship with the same uh, spirit of prayer. Adi and Jenny and Adi for leading us in, the, in worship. Um, since, it's, uh, since it's Mother's Day today, I wanted us to see this little cartoon. These little kids back there say, Mom, we've hired a few people to fill in for you while you relax on Mother's Day. And as you can see in the foreground, uh, we have a person who sweeps a, the taxi driver, the cook, the nurse, the tailor, the seamstress, uh, what's the other one I can't tell? The clown and the pastor too, wow. <laughs> so uh, we want to honor our mothers. They do so much for us and, and we are grateful. You know, uh, if uh, we had the freedom not to wear masks and all, I'd say get up and give your mom a hug or a kiss. But what we can do is we can clap. So why don't we clap for our mothers today, should we? Thank you. So let me make a few announcements. Our Sunday school uh, continues as usual. The little ones uh, up through second grade are doing their classes on Zoom uh, at home and they're meeting at 1130. And then Sona's class and Matt's class. Sona's is third, three, third through fifth. And then Matt has the young people, sixth grade and up, uh, will go out right after the English sermon uh, for their class uh, today at, at 12 o'clock or so. Depends on how long the sermon is. Uh, and then also just a reminder that our Bible studies continue each week as we uh, I preach on uh, the life of Joseph and the worship service and that's what we're discussing in our Bible studies so that we will consider the implications in our lives and think of the application of what we're learning and how we can put it to practice. And there's a lot to learn from, from Joseph himself as the title says, um, uh, how to overcome adversity, and uh, that's not something foreign to us. And so um, we have a lot to learn from Joseph, and we're grateful to God for the example that he's given us. We have a special tribute today. I guess we can call it a Mother's Day tribute. And so Andrew is going to play a piece for us, and then we'll go into our English sermon. Go ahead, Andrew. You can take off your mask if you need to, if you play better. <laughs> I don't know if it makes a difference. You're so good. <laughs>
Thank you so much, Andrew. That was beautiful. Well done. Thank you. Let us pray. Ah, before we pray, <laughs> I did forget two announcements to make. Um, uh, can you all see the pictures and everything on the uh, screen today? Well, a few weeks ago, I was told that we couldn't see very well, especially from back there. And so I'm grateful to Adi Ekmekji who got us a new projector and, and set it up a couple of weeks ago, and uh, things are a lot clearer now, and we want to thank you for, for oh, and Joe Barsoyan helped you to uh, uh, install it. Thank you. Also, I want to invite um, Philip, if he would come forward, please, and uh, make an announcement. There are some uh, things we're working on, and it's important for you as our congregation to be aware of it. You can use the uh, pulpit mic and uh, make the announcement there. Good morning. Um, as Bob Billy alluded to, uh, we're doing some roof work. Uh, we are finishing or completing the flat roofs. We have four flat roofs and we have the roof above us that's shingled. Um, as a result of doing the roofs, we've uncovered a few other issues. Um, the cost to repair or to re-roof these two sections is was or is $54,500. However, um, as a result of the contractor uh, losing a job to the U.S. Coast Guard, uh, they were going to start that job Monday. And since they lost it, they, they had people that needed work. So we got a $4,000 discount from them if we started the job Monday because I had called them Tuesday, the previous Tuesday. So um, we, uh, in the process of them re-roofing the uh, water line that feeds the sprinklers in the social hall burst. So we have to have that repaired. Uh, that's hopefully gonna happen this, <coughs> excuse me, coming week. Uh, also, we discovered a tree growing out of one of the down lines in the front of the church. Uh, so we've ha we have to take the down line out and remove the tree. Uh, the point I'm trying to make is that we have a 40 year old church and we have a lot of things that are in need of repair and we have to pay attention to them. And there will be more to come. Thank you. Thank you very much, Philip. Uh, we needed to hear that and be aware of what's going on, and uh, hopefully we'll all be able to continue to give of our tithes and offerings to the Lord, and uh, we won't have to make any additional announcements for funds, but as we give faithfully to the Lord of what Scripture teaches us anyways to do, and so uh, we'll be able to uh, afford these things. So, you know, you've noticed that we're not uh, taking a collection like we used to, uh, because that's our habit, because the scripture always teaches us that when we're coming before the Lord to worship him, part of it is to give, of our, give ourselves to him first and then give of our offerings to him. And so, uh, but we have the basket in the back. On the way out, you'll be able to drop in uh, your gifts there and or continue, as many of you do, to give online uh, there are three different ways that you can give. If you have any questions about that, you can ask me. So let us bow our heads in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we want to give you thanks today for your presence. Thank you that we have the privilege of approaching your throne of grace to, to worship you and also to listen from you. And so we are in need of your grace today. Uh, thank you for what you're doing in the lives of our people. And so, Lord, I pray that you would teach us to uh, receive your grace, to teach us to be patient with, with what you're doing in our lives, especially as we learn from Joseph, Lord. And we want to offer our lives to you, to be used by you for your glory, 
to serve your people. And so show us how to do that today. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So today is Mother's Day, and I want to say Happy Mother's Day to all. But as I say that, I want to ask, is it really a Happy Mother's Day for all? Because I think of people who would have loved to be a mom, but are not or are not able to. And so that's a painful thing. So when we say Happy Mother's Day, I don't know how they feel. Or then there are those who um, have lost children. They had children, but they lost one or more uh, at a young age. And so when you say Happy Mother's Day, that brings back memories and it's, it's sorrowful. And then there are those who lost their mother when they were young, or they m m might have uh, lost them in, in a tragic way or prematurely. And so when we say Happy Mother's Day, that's what comes to their mind. And so I'm not sure if today is really a very happy Mother's Day to all. I remember an older man who came to me years ago in one of my, the churches I had served and said, Pastor, you, uh, you didn't see me in church last Sunday. Uh, do you know why? I said, no, tell me why. He said, it was Mother's Day, and I never come to church on Mother's Day. I said, why is that? He said, because I lost my mother when I was a young boy. And every year that Mother's Day rolls around, I, I remember the loss that I had and how difficult that's been for me year after year. And the last thing I want to do is go to church and, and worship. And he said, I, I long for that mother's touch, that uh, warmth that only a mom could, could have shown me, in spite of the fact that my aunt raised me and she did a wonderful job, but I always knew that she was not my mother. That's a hard thing to hear. And it is said that sometimes people have to go through difficulties in order for them to be used by God in a special way. And I wonder how God used that man or others in a special way uh, because of the difficulty of this kind of difficulty that they've been through. Here's a quote from um, A.W. Tozer. He says, It is doubtful whether God can bless a man greatly until he has hurt him deeply. Ouch. Is that really true? But when we look at Joseph's life, Joseph's life, we see that that is true. Joseph was a young man who had lost his mother at a young age. Uh, she was giving birth to his younger brother, Benjamin, and she died at childbirth. And so he grew up without a mother in, an, in a very difficult atmosphere in his, in his uh, home, in his family. There was sibling rivalry. There was anger. There was animosity among them. His father was uh, um, a passive father when he came to the other brothers, especially. He was favored, and so the others were jealous of him and so on. And for him to be raised that way in a, in a home um, was difficult. And I'm sure he missed a mother's touch for a mom to guide him, uh, to give him whatever he needed. And so we see that Joseph had a very tough life, even though he was favored by his uh, father. But we know the truth that uh, his brothers mistreated him. They sold him into slavery. And then uh, he was ac accused fa falsely uh, of rape. And then he was thrown in prison. And he was abandoned in prison. He was forgotten. He was left there to rot. And that's where we left him uh, last Sunday. And today we pick up right there where the scripture says that he had been in prison for two full years after the cupbearer 
whose dream he had interpreted forgot all about him and so he was in prison for another two years how difficult that must have been to be there and not know how long you're going to be there there's no trial or a sentence that says you're going to be there for so many years so at least you have an idea but in this in this case he's tossed there he's abandoned he's forgotten and he just simply does not know when the end is is going to come and so we uh, ask ourselves why would this happen to him to this young man who was innocent where was God had God forgotten about him uh, but the fact is that God was still working in him and preparing preparing him for greatness and so when we go back to that uh, quote by A.W. Tozer it is doubtful whether God can bless a man greatly until he has hurt him deeply it begins to make sense for us when we look at Joseph's life. There's another character in the Bible who has suffered a great deal because of his faith or because uh, of uh, an agreement, let's say, between God and, uh, and uh, Satan, and that was Job. Job was one who, was, um, who lost everything. He first lost his riches, and then he lost 10 uh, children that he had, and in spite of all that, he continued to believe in God and worship God. But what is interesting about him is he is very honest with his feelings. And so when you turn to Job chapter 23, and we read in verses 3 through 9, I'm going to paraphrase this. He is venting. He is... Um, trying to argue with God and say, I'm looking for God, but I can't find him. I want him to come and sit down and I want him to answer all my whys, all my uh, how long questions about where I'm going. Why is this happening to me? But God is nowhere to be found. But then he says something very interesting. Uh, he says, but, and this is from verse 10, but he knows the way I take when he has tested me, I will come forth as gold. When God has tested me, I will come forth as gold. And that's the key phrase right there. When he has tested me. He was going through a difficult time. He was being refined just as a goldsmith refines the gold. He was being refined and God was preparing him for Greatness. And when we think of the number of years when he was a slave or in prison, we wonder what God was thinking. But we realize that affliction is gold in the making for the child of God. And God is the one who determines how long the process takes. God is the one who determines how long the process takes. God is the refiner. And so what Job is saying here is not that when I've been tested, then I will be given a million dollars. He's not saying when I'm tested, then uh, God will restore everything to me that I lost and, and there I'll, I'll continue as normal. He's not saying when God has tested me, my wife will re realize what she has said and she'll be sorry for it and then things will be all right between us. But he's saying basically that in spite of the difficulties that we experience outwardly in our circumstances, God is more interested in the inner person of what is inside of us, our, our character. And this is God's promise to us. When the process is finished, you will come forth as gold. When the process is finished, when God is done, you will come forth as gold. Then you'll be ready to serve me where I choose then you'll be able to handle whatever promotion comes your way. See, that last part is important. After God is done refining, then I will be ready to handle the promotion that comes my way. Otherwise, I may not be able to experience that. I may not handle the promotion in the right way. And so when we look at uh, Joseph's life, we see that uh, he was being refined by God. And we'll come back to that uh, uh, again a little later. But this is where, um, where we see what happened with Job. And we also see what happened with Joseph. While they were being refined, what did they do? They didn't turn away from God. 
but it says, my feet have closely followed his steps. I have kept to his way without turning aside. I have not departed from the commands of his lips. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my daily bread. In other words, what Job is saying, what Joseph has done, is that during the process, no matter how difficult it was, they did not turn their back on God, but they simply listened to God and obeyed him, and they did whatever God expected him to do. Our temptation is when things aren't going our way to run away, our temptation is to say, ah, who cares about God? I want to get out of this. So we start doing things that might be sinful or might be against God's will, and we miss out on what the blessing God has for us. And so what we learn from Job and from Joseph is that they continue to obey God to do what he wants us to do, and that is what refined them. And so <clears throat> we, we learn from um, Joseph that he was tested. He was tested, tested for at least two more years, and while he was in prison being tested, he was waiting and waiting and waiting as if nothing was happening, but we know that God was at work in his life. Something was happening and God was working in his life. I remember, I didn't suffer like Joseph did, but I remember when I had left Lebanon and I was uh, in, in London and I had to stay in England for several, I didn't know for how long, uh, while I was waiting for my papers to come through to immigrate to Canada. And I was sitting in uh, somebody's store in London calling my aunt, who lived in northern England, and she said, you're not going to come and stay with us. We've set up a, f for you to go to a small theological training college. I was 18 years old. The last thing I wanted to do was to go to a th theological training college. But that's where we're going to send you because it's a school and at least you'll be in school and you'll study something and maybe that'll help you. But uh, we don't know how long this is going to take so you, you can't come to our house and just sit around and do nothing. And I remember how emotional I got. I wanted to cry. Uh, my parents weren't around. It was a time of waiting. And I ended up going to that theological training college for several months. And I thought that was a waste of my time. But God knew that he was doing something in my life, preparing me for what was to come later on in my life. And we see the same thing in the life of Joseph, that he was in, in prison and he was waiting and he was waiting. And we think, we think that nothing was happening, but God was working in his life. And then came the turning point in his life. And it was just another day... Um, just like any other day when he got up and he didn't know what was going to happen that day. So let's pick up uh, in chapter 41, starting with verse 1, and let me read uh, seven verses. When two full years had passed, Pharaoh had a dream. He was standing by the Nile when out of the river there came up seven cows, sleek and fat, and they grazed among the reeds. After them, seven other cows, ugly and gaunt, came up out of the Nile and stood beside those on the riverbank. And the cows that were ugly and gaunt ate up the seven sleek, fat cows. Then Pharaoh woke up. He probably thought that he was having indigestion and he couldn't sleep and that's why he was having these dreams. But fortunately, he fell asleep again and he had a second dream. Seven heads of grain, healthy and good, were growing on a single stalk. After them, seven other heads of grain sprouted, then a thin and scorched by the east wind. The thin heads of grain swallowed up the seven healthy full heads. Then Pharaoh woke up. It had been a dream. And so the next verse, verse 8, says that he was troubled in his mind because of what he dreamt, because he wanted to find out what was this all about. And so he calls all his magicians and wise men of Egypt, Pharaoh told them his dreams, but no one could interpret them for him. Now, when he talks about the magicians and wise men, he's referring to the, the people who are most educated and serving him in Egypt. It's not just magicians who just make up things, but these are people who are well-versed in the writings, the sacred writings of that day, and they're well-educated, and so the, he calls on them, and they could have made up some things, but you can honor their, their um, honesty here. And so suddenly the light comes on of the cupbearer, and he says, oh yeah, 
I remember this guy who was in prison and uh, we told him our dreams and, and whatever he said came true. The other guy was uh, executed and, and I was freed and maybe we can call on him. And so Pharaoh says, wait a minute, if you have such a guy, why are you not getting him? So they call on him to come and we pick up in verse 14 and it says, so Pharaoh sent, the Joseph, sent for Joseph and he was quickly brought from the dungeon when he had shaved and changed his clothes he came before Pharaoh. And so here is um, uh, Joseph. Just, just imagine what he's thinking now. He's been in, in the dungeon and in prison for uh, a long time, more than two years. And all of a sudden, he's taken out of there and he's taken to the Pharaoh. Fortunately, he was shaved and bathed. And that was uh, very important for the custom of the day, the Egyptian custom of being well-groomed uh, well to be standing before Pharaoh. And so he's wondering why this is happening all of a sudden when uh, things were so gloomy for him. And as he's standing before Pharaoh, this is what Pharaoh says to him. Um, look at verse 15. Let's go back. He says to Pharaoh, sorry. He, Pharaoh says to him, I had a dream and no one can imp interpret it, but I have heard it said of you that when you hear a dream, you can interpret it. Listen to Joseph's response. Joseph says, I cannot do it, but God will give Pharaoh, not to me, but to Pharaoh, the answer he desires. Just think of Joseph's integrity and humility of confessing to Pharaoh that it's not me, but there's a God that I know who will give us whatever we need to hear. And again, put yourself in his situation. We would have been tempted to say, this is my moment. Here I am standing before the Pharaoh and he needs something from me that only I can deliver. And this is where I can make my demands. And I can say to Pharaoh, you know what? I'm not going to tell you what you need to know until you make things right. Call that cupbearer here. I've been imprisoned for two years because of him. First execute him, and then maybe I'll start telling you what you need to hear. But he didn't say that. And what is amazing about Joseph is that while he was in prison, he knew that God was at work in his life. God was teaching him things that he would be needing to use later on when he came out. He, he learned how to be in charge of the estate of Potiphar. He learned how to run the prison because the warden left everything to him. And now he's going to be called on running all of Egypt to be able to save not only the Egyptians, but all the people in the region. And that's what God was teaching him for, for all these years. And he knew that very well. And so... What is interesting here is that we learn that Joseph's heart was being broken. God was breaking him in order to be able to use him later in a special way. God was working in his life so that he would refine him to be as gold. And here's something important. When God gives, um, sorry, let's move on. Um, throughout the rest of Joseph's life, from age 30 when he came out to the age of 110 when he died, we will hear not one word of resentment on his heart or from his lips. That's amazing to me. Not a word of resentment of why did God do this to me? Why did I have to go through this? But he had learned that God was at work in his life. And so the story goes on. And uh, so Pharaoh tells him his dreams. And Joseph responds to his dreams. And look at verse 25. Um, so he's telling him, this is God's message to you that the seven years are, there are going to be seven years of plenty. And then there are going to be seven years of famine. And so we need to set food aside uh, to, to save a lot of it so that when we have the seven years of famine, that we will be able to feed the people. But listen to how he begins and ends this. When you look at verse 25, he says, the reason, um, sorry, am I in 25 here? 
Then Joseph said to Pharaoh, the dreams of Pharaoh are one and the same. God has revealed to Pharaoh what he is about to do. Notice again, God is the one who's going to reveal. And then once he explains to him what the, what the uh, uh, interpretation of the dream is, he ends it this way. The reason the dream was given to Pharaoh, again, he honors his position as the king. The reason the dream was given to Pharaoh in two forms is that the matter has been firmly decided by God and God will do it soon. It is God who's going to do it. And so he gives all credit to, to God to, to be able to, to do this. And we see truly how he had humbled himself under the mighty hand of God. And then uh, we go on to verse 33 where now Joseph gives the Pharaoh some words of advice. And he says to him, and now let Pharaoh look for a discerning and wise man and put him in charge of the land of Egypt. And then he proceeds to give him a specific plan of how they should set aside a portion of, the, of what they have a harvest uh, every year so that in the next seven years they'll have plenty to be able to give to the people of Egypt and people in their region. Joseph had learned to be in charge of much. And that is how God was preparing, for, preparing him for a, a great task. And so when Pharaoh looked at him, he realized that he had the right man standing in front of him. Look at verse 37 with me. The plan seemed good to Pharaoh and to all his officials. Remember, it's not just the king who's listening to him, but all the officials who, who could not interpret his dream were there standing. And he says, so they all thought that this, this was a good plan. So Pharaoh asked them, can we find anyone like this man, one uh, who in, like this man, one in whom is the spirit of God? Can we find any, anyone like him? And so Pharaoh knew right away that this was the right person. What did Pharaoh see in him? He found him to be gold because God had been refining Joseph. We go on with verse 39. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, since God has made all this known to you, there is no one so discerning and wise as you. You shall be in charge of my palace and all my people are to submit to your, up, to your orders. Only with respect to the throne will I be greater than you. You have been discerning and wise. Where did we see this in Joseph's life? Discerning means to be able to assess the situation and to come up with a wise decision. Do you remember when he was tempted by Mrs. Potiphar? And what did he do? He kept saying no. She was relentless and he finally ran away from her. He was being discerning and making the right decision and God was working in him to give him the success he needed to teach him everything before he could be in charge of all of Egypt. And so when Pharaoh looked at him, he saw gold. Jesus said, you have been faithful in little, I will put you in charge of greater things. And that's exactly what we see in Joseph's life. We continue with verse 42, 41. So Pharaoh said to Joseph, I hereby put you in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh took his signet ring from his finger. That's the platinum card that he could use for anything he wanted. And put it on Joseph's finger. He dressed him in robes of uh, fine linen and put a gold chain around his neck. Now imagine again, just a few minutes ago, Joseph was in prison in the dungeon, wondering what was next, not knowing how long he would be here. And the next minute, he's standing before Pharaoh. He's interpreting the Pharaoh's dreams. And the Pharaoh is putting him in charge of all of Egypt, the second in command of all of Egypt. Egypt was the superpower of that day. What was Joseph thinking? Knowing that God was the one who had been working in his life, knowing that this could not have been his doing, but this could have only come from God. 
he was probably thinking, praise be to God, this is not something I did, but something God orchestrated. Praise be only to God. Once again, we see his humility here, his integrity. He, he realizes this is not something I could have done, I could have orchestrated. Only God could have orchestrated something like this. And so we go, go on with verse 43. Um, he had him ride in a chariot as his second in command, and people shouted before him, make way. In other words, bow down to him. Remember, it's not Joseph who's saying, bow down to me, but... The guy running with the chariot is telling the people to bow down to him because this was a king's command. Thus he put him in charge of the whole land of Egypt. And then we go down to verse 46. Joseph was 30 years old when he entered the service of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Do you remember how old Joseph was when he was sold into slavery? 17. How old is he here? 30. That means for 13 years... He had no freedom to do whatever he wanted to do. He was either a slave or he was in prison, doing whatever his bosses told him to do. He could not do anything else. He could have been a person who was angry, bitter, resentful, and yet he bowed before God in humility and God was working in his life. From Man's perspective, that was a waste of time in a young man's life. From God's perspective, God was refining him, turning him into golds. Do you know when a goldsmith knows that gold has been purified? He puts the gold on fire and it heats up and it starts bubbling and all the impurities go to the surface and the goldsmith removes the impurities from the surface and keeps boiling it until he can see his own reflection in the gold. And then he knows that the gold is pure. That's exactly what God did in his life. That's exactly what God wants to do in your life and my life. That when we go through difficulties in our lives, we hate it. And yet, we need to realize that God is doing something in our lives. He's trying to remove all the purities so that we will become more like him as Joseph became more like him. And that is why James says that we should consider it all joy, my brothers and sisters, when you encounter the various kinds of trials, because this is for your sake to make, allow you to persevere and to be complete, lacking in nothing, and then you will have the crown of, um, crown of life. And so as we finish today, this is what I want us to think about. What do we learn from Joseph's experience in God's furnace? The first thing is, during the waiting period, trust God without panic. Can we do that? Trust God without panic. It's not easy. Joseph was sold, was abandoned, was forgotten. Somebody forgot about him. What that means for us is to let God handle the cupbearers and the Potiphar's and the Mrs. Potiphar's and all that in our lives. When you have been deeply wounded by others, deeply hurt by others, don't try to take revenge or do things right uh, uh, in, in bringing justice to yourself. But you do the right thing in being faithful to God in what he's called you to do. And let God handle the cupbearers and the Mrs. Potiphar's and, and all the others who forget about you and, and hurt you. Because God has promised that I will never leave you nor forsake you. We read that in, in Hebrews 13, 5. And so God is at work. So don't panic when you have the difficulties. The second thing we can learn from this is when the reward comes, thank God without pride. Thank God without pride. You know, there are people who are going to look at you and say, you deserve that. But deep down, you know that God is doing it for you. If it weren't for God's plan, Joseph wouldn't have reached, to, reached that moment to be the second in command. So if God wants it, God's going to make it happen. It wasn't Pharaoh who did this to him. It wasn't Pharaoh who made him the second in command, but it was God's orchestration. God planned it that way and brought him to that point. 
And so there, there, are, will, there will be people who will say you deserve it, but you need to be humble and say God did it. Then there will be people who will say you don't deserve it, but only God knows what you deserve because you have been faithful to him. You know, the Bible is full of promises. And so here's a project that I want to give you. In fact, someone says there are 7,474 promises in the Bible. I don't know if that's accurate, but there are a lot of promises. And so the project that I want to give you this week is this. When you do your daily Bible reading, and I hope that you do a daily Bible reading, and if you don't see me and I'll give you a plan, but start something. But every day you read your scriptures, see if you will notice a promise that God has made in that passage and write it down. And see how many you can come up with this week and next week and the week after. Just write down the promises that God has made you. And if you're up to it, whenever you find a promise, see if there is a condition to that promise. For example, in Philippians chapter 4, we read that the peace of God will, that passes all human understanding will guard your heart and your mind. But there's a condition for you to be anxious about nothing but pray about everything. But write down those, those uh, promises and then see if you can claim them and see if there are any conditions for you to keep and see what God will do in your life. Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you for this example in Joseph's life. Thank you, Lord, for uh, the fact that he did not resent anything, but he learned that you are in charge, you are in control, and we see how he was promoted because of what you did. Lord, I know that I have a lot to learn here. Maybe we, we all do. And so, Lord, I pray that you would continue to speak to us and encourage us. And as we are faithful, Lord, I pray that you would reward us. And even if we don't see the reward right away, Lord, we want to be faithful to you as Job was, as Joseph were, to follow your commands so that you would continue to refine us to the point that we become gold where we reflect you in our lives. Thank you for your promise, Lord. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us all stand and sing the Lord's Prayer together. Park, Havidianus Havidenitz. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, those who are third through fifth grade can go with Sona, and those who are sixth grade and up can go with Matt. Or you can stay if you like. Our scripture this morning in Armenia is found in 2 Timothy. I'm going to be looking at a few verses in chapter 1 and a few verses in I forgot to change that again. So it's not James, that, that was last week's. So I'm going to look at uh, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 3 through 7, and then uh, chapter 3, 
uh, verses 10 through uh, 17, if you want to read it on your own. Kidem vor mes me amen amen megas vor Hisusi he de vor tenk. Papa kunink vor mer havatke pochan tenk ha chortok serunti na la mer zavag nerun na la mer tornig nerun. Yev polorasal chank kenink vor garenak shidak kerbov an senel at havatke a hotel iren samar sorvet senel. Pats adener gumada hok wing. Te arčiok pidi garo anang an el manavant yev vor andani kin mec mega ga vor Hisusi he de vor che havadatsial mega che gerna diga goga gits elal gerna mez hair mez mair melal gerna urish andani ki am tam melal vor aste tu chunoni mez avag nerun vora yev vor eman hok ne gemda ofing vor arčiok arkel pidi elai haba yete ir arjek nere ir eskis punk nere aveli mez aste chune nar mez avag nerun vora aina den arčiok mez avag nere. Հավա դարին բիդլան աստուծո երբ մեծ նան։ Եվ այսօրվա ընկերության մեջ մեր կաղոթին մեջ կդեսնենք ամեն տեսակ անասվածություն գա, որ մեր բզիկներուն գա կպոխանցվի, մեր բզիկները կդեսնեն, կսորվին, լա թբրոցեն Սերվես նույն դեսակ, դարպեր դեսակի աստետություն ուներ, թե հավադաց յալի գողմ է, թե անհավադի գողմ է։ Եվ այսօրվա անցը, որ գուզեմ նայիլ անալ դիմոթյոս ինքն է։ Դիմոթյոսի հայրը հավադացյալ մեկը չեր, Հիս փոխանցեին իրեն զավգին գամ թորնիգին։ Բայց եվ կսերդենք ասոխոսկի գդեսնենք, որ դիմոթյոսի մայրը և նիգե և մեծ մայրը լատովյա ավեդարանին պարի լուրը լսեցին Հիսուսի հետևորդները գրնալ ալ բողոս Հառակյալել � գրնար ինքն ալ կեշ աստելջուն ունենալ իր վրա։ Եվ գնեսնենք, որ դիմոթյոս իր մորմեն և մեծ մորմեն սորված զլալով, եվ որ ավեդարանին պարի լուրը լսեց և շատ համանապար բողոս առակյալ է լսեց, այն որ վերջի վերջո ինքը զինք թաստիարագեց աշագերդեց և եպեսոսի եգեղեցին հովիվի եղավ։ Ուրեմ են գդեսնես, թե դիմոթյոս ուր էր և ահավասիկ հիմա ուր հասած է։ Ուրեմ են գարթամ մի կանի համարներ, եգրոտ միշտ կեզ իմ ավոտներուս մեջ կհիշեմ, կիշերու ծորեք։ Սանգալով կեզ դեսնել ու միտ պերել կու արձունքները տվորբեսի ուրախությունով լեցվիմ։ Կհիշեմ կու ունեցած անգեղծ հավատքըդ, որ առաջ մեծ մայրը � որ կեզի դրվեցավ, երբ իմ ծերքերս կու վրատ թրի, վասնձի ասված մեզ երկ չոդության հոգի չէ դվավ, հապա զորության ու սիրո և ասկաստության։ Եվ էր չի գծատքիմ երորդ կու խունդաս երորդ համարեն գսեի, իստուն � հալածանքներուս, չարճարանքներուս, որոնք ինձի բադահեցան, անդյոքի և իգոնյոյի և լուստրոյի մեջ, 
Kides te inchpes halazan neru ham peretsi yev dera azadetsis ais amenen. Yev dasn chorot tamaren sagain tun hasta duni getsir ein panerun mech vorong sorvetsar u vorons havadatsir vasnzi kides te vorme sorvadzes. Naev ku mangutenet iver sub kerkere kides vorong gernan imastun nelkes pergvelu Christos Jesusin varayegats havatkova. Polor kirke as zo shunchne ye voktagare sorvetsnelu hantimanelu shitkelu ye vartarochan mech khradelu hamar vorbesi as zo marte gadarial la amen pari kordzeru padrastvats havasik ais mikani hamar nerun mech hink karj keder anem arachina bos arakial gehishet ink inchpes sorvats e ir nakhnik neren առաջված սերունդեն փոխանցված էր իր հավատքը եւ գխոսի ասոր մասին ասելով թե ասոնք մաքուր խղջ մտանքով գհետեվեին աստուծո եւ ուրեմն են ես ալ այդ մաքուր խղջ մտանքը ունիմ այսօր ատկնշանակե որ հաստատ էին իրենց հավատքին մեջը երկրորդ կի հիշեւ որ դիմոթիոսի հավատքն ալ անգերձ է ինչպես իր մորը եւ մեծ մորը հավատքը անգերձ էր եւ այդ է որ իրեն փոխանցված է ուրեմն թուն ալ բահե այդ անգերձ հավատքը գսե անգերձը սելով այսինքն միայն սկացումով դարված չլա հապա գիտնա աստծո խոսքին բարնագությունը եւ ադոր համացային աբրի երրորդ բոհոս արակյալ գքաչալերը դիմոթիոսի որ հավադարի մնա աստուծո քանի որ իր արչևը շատ լավ օրինակներ ունեցած է ինչպես իր մայրը եւ մեծ մայրը որոնք միան չի խոսեցան աստուծո մասին հապա աբրեցան այդ հավատքը եւ անոնց կողքին վերջը բոհոս արակյալ եկավ եւ հավասիկ օրինակ եկավ եւ ինչպես կգարթանք երրորդ գլխուն մեջ որ դիմոթիոս դեսավ բոհոս արակյալի հավատքը եւ որ անիգա գհալածվեր եւ որ գչարչարվեր եւ քիցավ անոր վարթաբեդությունը անոր վարմունքը թե ինչպես պետք է թիմակրավեի այս դժվարությունը աստուծո խոսքին համացային եւ վերջապես կուկանք վերջին մասին ուր գսե թե թունքու մանգութենեց սորված ես աստծո խոսքը այսինքն քու մայրը եւ մեծ մայրը սորվեցին քեզի եւ ինչ որ սորվեցին աստծո խոսքեն քեզ փրգեց փրգության առաջ նորթեց Եվ ադուր համար գսե ասիգայ է ասվածա շունչը որ գսորվեցն է գտած ճարագե եւ այլն եւ ահա ասիկ բոս արակյալի ասածը այս է փոլորիս որ իբր մայրեր եւ մեծ մայրեր նախ եւ առաջ այս բարդականությունը ունինք եւ ասված գուզե որ հավադարի մլանք աղոթելու մեր զավակներուն համար եւ շիդակ լավ օրինա գլալու համար բայց ոս ուրիշ կարեւոր փամ մգա որ նույնիսկ եթե թուն մայր եւ մեծ մայր չես այդ չի նշանակել որ այս բարդականությունը քեզի ալ չինար հապա իբր մորեղ բայր հորեղ բայր մորակույր հորակույր իբր ինչ որ է ընտանիքի մեջ եւ մանավանդ իբր եկեղեցի մեր փոլորին բարդականությունն է աղոթել մեր զավակներուն համար եւ մեր թորնիկներուն համար մեր փոլորին բարդականությունն է լավ օրինա գլալ այս բզիկներուն Ուրեմն միան դունին մեջ չի հապա ուր որենք եւ որ մեր շուրջը այդ բզիկները կան քաչալերենք զիրենք աղոթենք իրենց համար անունով աղոթենք իրենց համար չենք գիտեր թե ասված ինչ ունի իրենց համար չենք գիտեր թե ինչ թժվարություններ են գանցին այսօր բայց մեզի գինա հավադարի մլալ աստուծո որ աղոթենք եւ ասված պիտի լսե մեր աղոթները եւ գիտենք որ ամեն անց դարբեր է միսներն ամեն բզդիկ դարբեր է միսներն ոմանք անմիջապես կսորվին եւ կգործադրեն որ մանք ըմփոստ կլան եւ գուզեն իրենց ուզած նախ անել բայց եւ որ մենք կաղոթենք ասված իր ժամանակին մեր աղոթները կվադասխանե արդյոք համբերությունը ունինք դժվար է բայց ասված մեզի պետ գեղած համբերությունը գուդա շնորհքը գուդա որբեսի հավադարի մլանք աղոթելու լավ օրինա գլալու երբ որ արիթ ունենանք խոսելու սորվեցնելու եւ դեսնենք թե դեր է ինչ պիտեն է անով եւ ահավասիկ դիմոթիոսի օրինա գը մեր արչևն է աղոթենք դեր իսուս այսօր գիտեմ որ այս 
շրջանակներուն մեջ մեր զավակները մեծնելը սորվեցնելը թաստիարակելը դժվար է ամեն տեսակ անասվածություն կա իրենց կյանքին մեջ իրենց շուրջը իվանոր համար մենք կուզենք ձունգի քալ եւ բաղադիլ խնդրել քեզ մե որ պաշտպանես մեր զավակները չարեն եւ մեզի դաս այդ իմաստությունը եւ հավադարմությունը աղոթելույ օրինա գլալու կաղոթեմ դեր մայրերու մեծ մայրերու համար որ իրենց դաս պետք եղած համբերությունը իմաստությունը զորությունը սերը ինչ որ դվիր սուրբոքին միջոցով հավասիկ մեր զավակները քեզի գհանցնենք դեր անո քեզի գպատկանին արդեն մենք բարձրապես գուզենք հավադարի մելալ ինչ որ քեզի գպատկանի շնորհակալ ենք խոստումներու համար հիսուսի անունով գաղութեմ ամեն Um, and we're going to finish our service today singing his eye is on the sparrow and i know he watches me why don't we stand and finish our service with this song why should i feel discouraged why should the shadow I know he 
I sing because I'm happy. I wouldn't know it because of your masks. And I can't wait for the day when we will remove these and we'll see each other's smiles that God put there to encourage each other with that. And so I thank you for being here today and happy Mother's Day to all mothers. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Dero nitsez, yev bahetsez, deri dieres a parsas nitsez vara, yev vor mitsezi, deri idieres a baidzarats nitsez vara, yev chaw utyundatsezi anun hor, yev vor voyev hopwin surpo. Amen.